I think the EOS R is the best mirrorless camera that Canon has ever made, and I'm going to prove it. Over the R5 and the R6? Yep. This guy. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on the Sunlands, we're going to take a look at the question as what is the best Canon mirrorless on the market today? You may think that's very obvious, but I don't think it's quite as obvious as you might think. And I also do want to just see how much of a difference there is. When we've shot the R5 and the R6, we have both been really impressed with a lot of things about them. But the R still holds its own, I think. So we want to compare the images side by side, talk about autofocus and all the other things. Let's give a special shout out to Lens Pro to Go, which provided all of our cameras and lenses here today. That is an incredible company where you can get things to test and to be able to work with. Uh, any kind of lenses, any bodies that you need, it's really a great place to be able to rent from. So we're going to do the picture quality test, and this is where we're, I think, we're really going to see if there's a difference. First of all, these cameras have very different ranges of resolutions. You have 20 megapixels with the R6, 30 with the R, and then 45 megapixels with the R5, which is awesome. And then we're also going to look at color tonality. How do they reproduce color? Is there a big difference between all these cameras? Or are they all pretty similar because they're all Canons? I don't know. We'll check it out. I, am, I think we're going to be surprised by the results. This is where I feel like, holy cow, these cameras are all super similar. So similar. I did do some adjustments to a little bit of you know, the light and the color just a little bit on each camera to get them closer together just to show how similar they can be. I honestly thought that that's where we'd see the biggest difference is you blow these up and holy cow, there's so much more detail on the uh, R5, say. It is true. You do blow them up and you can really get in there on her eyeball and see all the different uh, you know, eyelashes and stuff. You don't get quite the same amount of detail in the R or the R6, but this is what's interesting. The R and the R6 are actually very similar to me in terms of detail, even though one is 50% larger than the other. Yeah, the R6 is holding up much better than I thought it would. The image looks great, there's a lot of detail there. Uh, the color is a little better on the R5. I think it kind of pops a little more, maybe a little more true. Overall, with all these photos, the R6 color just felt a little less three-dimensional, but we're talking less than a 5% difference in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they, overall, you just have to say you can correct these and they look very, yes. very similar. Very, they very They really similar. do. And you blow them up, and you do you see that much detail uh, difference in them? You see some. Very, Absolutely, the very, R5 is definitely better. Very technical amount of detail. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's a very good term, a very technical <laughs> amount of detail. So it's time to look at the dynamic range on each of these cameras. So the new R5 and R6 should have a better dynamic range than the R does. Most digital cameras fall apart when you overexpose. It just it kills them. You're better to underexpose, but we'll just see what that dynamic range is and how it compares from each one of these cameras to each other. Uh, here at zero, I mean, I did try and match these at their starting exposure. They're all looking good. You're holding everything in the background. Uh, we moved to minus one exposure. Underexposure is always just fine on digital yeah. cameras. <clears throat> minus one stop. I don't expect to see anything until two or three stops. Even three minus stops. two stops yeah. here, you're really not seeing any difference in the image. Not seeing any grain build, really. <clears throat> not really. At minus three stops, I feel like if you kind of start zooming in, you you do start to see a little bit of a little bit of texture in the shadow, but her skin still looks really clear on all the cameras. Looking Actually, the R6 nice. looks the most uh, kind of the most neutral right now. You're right, you definitely are seeing a little bit of a cool green coming mm -hmm. on with the R. We move to minus four stops. I mean, the R6 is looking beautiful. You do have some grain behind her head on the wall, but overall looking really pretty. Same with the R5, really pretty. The R is starting to go a little weird with the color. At minus I four think. stops, the color's starting to shift a little bit. You're seeing a little bit of grain building as well in the background. Even, let's, zooming back out, even with the R5, the color is shifting a little bit. It's kind of turning magenta. Of course, right. it's looking, the R is looking a little green. And the R6 is looking pretty good. R6 is great. I mean, minus five stops here again. It was really dark. It minus this is five minus stops. Five so stops. <laughs> it didn't get the autofocus quite right. but. Holy cow, the R6, the color in the R6 and everything is just holding so well. There is some texture and banding in the shadows now. You can see the green yeah. and magenta spot splotches. Look at the contrast we've lost on the R5. It's just there's the blacks have lost their kind of their, their strength and it's kind of a red uh, look to his skin tone has lost it. Now we're going green with the R. The R is going really contrasty. It's not holding onto the shadows, a lot of banding and plus one stop. Of course, outside the window it blows out pretty much immediately. It is very bright out there. But they look very similar. Color is, is a little different in the same way that we saw before. A little green with the R, 
little magenta with the uh, yeah, a little magenta with the R5, mm -hmm. and pretty much on, a little better than the R6. Looks pretty good. In terms of dynamic range, though, all of the uh, yeah. like the highlights they are look, blowing out exactly they the look same exactly time. Exactly the same. Plus three stops here. Yeah, you do see that R and the R5 kind of turn yellow. Her skin's getting a little messed up. R6 still holding onto the color a little bit better. A little better, but boy, look at those highlights. They look very similar. Although, look at the R6. You see the cross braces of mm -hmm. the window. You see a little of that with the R, but you don't with the R5. The That's it's interesting. Completely yeah. gone. I think the R6 is the winner. Yeah, it feels like this. the R6 is a uh, very consistent and clean. Yeah. All right, here's our ISO test. A little bit of a mixed lighting test too, because we have some warm and cool light coming on her. At 400 ISO, all these images are looking really they good. They look very good. Most of these cameras at 400 look great. Let's see what 800 looks like. Boy, at 800, they're still so clean. I should point out, the R6 is a little darker than the rest. And that, is. that might have been the case in dynamic range test. I did kind of try and match the levels on all the exposures, and maybe the R6 is a little darker overall, but it's nothing you can't correct. No, 800 looks great. If we go to 1600, I'm I having a hard time seeing much. <laughs> even on any of them. On any of them. Her skin still looks really nice, even on it the does. R. I mean, the grain's really not building at 1600. 3200. The R5 is so clean. It really is. I'm curious how the R6 would look if we boosted the exposure a little bit, but it's also pretty clean. I like the consistency with the R6, the color and everything. The R, you do start to see it even in her skin. You can see it in the wall behind her. Yep. 6400 ISO is, you are starting to see the grain on all the cameras. Um, Still very similar, but well, the R5 feels better. The R5 There's, does feel better. Yeah, much better. And the, R, the R6 looks actually worse than the R, or similar to the R. I'd say similar. Yeah. I don't see as much in her skin, like this cheek on the right. I guess you're right. 12,800 isn't going to look great on any of them, but I think the R, you definitely see it stronger. Look at the, the highlight on her forehead and the green that's happening on the R. You're getting a little bit of green on the R6 as well. It's really interesting. Oh, interesting. It's to there. You're seeing some of that in the R5, but it's holding much better. So that's a 12,800 though. I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> Unreasonable. Yes, it is unreasonable. <laughs> it's interesting, the R5 is washing out like it did with the underexposure. That's what, how it looks to yeah, me. Yeah, the contrast has become very, you don't see great blacks, you don't mm -hmm. see the whites are not very clear. The R6 is very consistent with the look, but it is building grain more, I yes, think. Yes, absolutely. And, and of course the R is not doing as well as either of the other two. Again though, I mean, if, if we're comparing the R and the R6 particularly, maybe a stop difference at most. So that, there you look at the ISO test. I mean, it's, I mean, you can go up higher on some of these, yeah, but the, I don't know that it really matters. The R5, the R6 goes up to 100,000 ISO. Uh, I'm frankly not super impressed by high numbers. No. Unless it looks good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so one of the things about the new Canon cameras is they have the new Canon dual pixel autofocus system, version two and that's supposed to be much better than the original. The original was pretty good. I always felt like the Canon R was kind of top of its class in terms of autofocus, so I'm excited to see how they compare. Let me just say first, we took the best take, as it were. We did this multi multiple times with each camera. We took the best take from all of them, and in that case, almost every single image is focused on her across all three cameras. With, yeah, we have to say that in doing that, it seemed like the R was pretty on, with most of the uh, most of the images mm -hmm. on each take that we did, we saw more in focus on that one. The we R, saw a lot R6, in focus. The R6 was very good. The R6 was by far the best. It was, it was just spot on. And that was throughout the day as we were shooting. I just felt like the R6 was very responsive, always sharp, always in focus. Yeah. Now the R5 had a lot of images that fell out of focus and struggled a little bit when it crossed the tree. But we did get a take where it was completely in focus the entire time. So I don't know how you judge something like that. <laughs> I'll be honest, I think this tree, her walking behind the tree really messed it up for a lot of, we were shooting a lot of other cameras that day too, messed it up for a lot of the cameras and it even messed it up for the R5. When we did some where she just walked straight towards the camera. It's on every time. It's on every time. And to that point, we did do a low light autofocus test. This is really interesting. This is a new test that we've done just on the last couple of camera reviews and that is we're at minus four stops. And so you are, are way underexposed, which means the camera's not getting enough light and you're having to keep focus as the person walks towards the camera in that really low light situation. The R6 did phenomenal. I mean, there are some images here that are a little soft, it's not quite on her eye, that kind of thing, but it is tracking her, and most of the, image, most of the images are sharp and acceptable to my eye, my judgment. Yep. 
Yeah, the R5 also did really well in the scenario. Uh, it didn't skip a beat. And in fact, I would say, you know, it, it performed on par with the R6. Again, maybe a little bit of softness here and there, but overall, very acceptable tracking her just fine. The R really struggled. It held on to her until she walked into the shadow and then gone. She, it, and we did this- a, Never found her again. We did it a few times with the R and it did not find her again. It could not figure it out. I think of all of the tests we've done, the autofocus is the one where the R5 and the R6 far outstrip the R. Yeah, yeah, they definitely. And the R held up real well in just the open light test. Yeah. It held up very well. You but know, in that low light, it just had a hard time. Regular shooting, it seemed to be just fine. Yep. But when you're pressure testing these, the R5 and the R6 blew me away. They were so good. Yep. So let's take a look at video with these three cameras because this is the area that I really feel like the R is a better choice than the other two just because the R delivers and doesn't shut down over heat but it has some significant disadvantages. I, let me just talk about the disadvantages here for a second. First of all, as you can see already, I took all of these video clips just standing, leaning against the doorway even. Really trying to stabilize Really trying them. to stabilize I'm not trying to move the camera at all. Uh, same lens, same position. You obviously see the crop factor, which is, I think, the number one disadvantage of the R. It is. You cannot get a wide shot to save your life with that camera because the crop is so intense. This is a 50 millimeter lens. You compare the composition on the R to the composition of the other cameras, it's just ridiculous. Second of all, the image stabilization, the R doesn't have it, and you no. see that here. It's, it's just very like very shaky. It's so shaky. You gotta keep that thing on a tripod. You cannot handhold yeah. that thing very easily. The IBIS on the R5 and the R6 are both really good. Yep. And very smooth. It's really beautiful. Finally, even just looking at it without zooming in or anything, I can see the noise on the R versus the R5 and the R6. These were shot at 800 ISO and you do see it just with your eyeballs in a small frame on the R and the R5 and R6 are very clean. So there's the R5 and R6 have superior video capabilities if they could just bring them to the party all the time <laughs> and not overheat. And that is the problem. <laughs> JP did an overheating test. I did. I got about two clips. I got an hour and about, ten, or an hour and about 10 minutes on the R6 before it completely shut down. I think if someone handed me two cameras and said, well, this one takes better video, but it might overheat after 25 minutes, I would have a hard time picking that one because you just never know what the scenario will be. Yeah, you don't, you just, all of a sudden you don't have a camera. It's like standing there and not having a camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't shoot this right now. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't work. So if you had to buy one of these cameras as a crossover camera, now, I do, you could not make the argument that the R5 is a worse still camera than the R. The R5 is by far the most superior still camera, I think, on the market. But if you want the best crossover camera, I mean, in the R series, what's the best crossover camera? I think it's the R. Just because you can use it consistently and you don't, it's not gonna overheat on you and you also get a great image as we've seen. Invest in the glass. That's really the importance to future-proofing yourself. You get great glass, you'll be able to use that for years. And I will say the glass will probably make a bigger difference on your image than any of the actual cameras in this case if you're just shooting video or if you're just shooting photo. Uh, all of the images from the cameras were similar, but the lenses are going to make a huge difference. So there you have it. You'll probably have to make your own decision. Depends on your situation, how you're going to use the camera and what's important to you. But as I'm looking at these things, the images are not that different, uh, but you do have a video capability with the R that you don't get with the R6 and the R5 because they overheat. So I'm sticking with the R at this point. I own the R, but, I, was, but I bought the R5 and then I sent it back. Yeah. So I was, I was ready to pay the money and step up. I, I'd have it right now if it didn't overheat. and be so super happy about it. So it's so unfortunate. All right, so make sure you subscribe here to The Silent Lands. Ring that bell so you get notified every time we have a video up. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. Hey, over there. Hey, little help here. I'm feeling green, man. Come on, come over here. I just need you to click on the 18% gray on my spider checker. Come on, just go over it. Click on it. Click on it. It's going to make me look better. There you go. Yeah, just click, click. Ah, there you go. Don't I look better? You should feel better because I look better. It's that easy. So get your spider checker in there by data color. It's just that easy. Shoot a few frames of video at the beginning. Click on the 18% gray in editing and you can color balance your footage. You get a great starting point. It's just that easy.